Well, welcome back. Well, you know, it wouldn't be Miata Khalifa if uh, I didn't take it to Greer and have problems right out the box. Wasn't any turbo problems. A previous problem that I've had before that <sighs> another one of those wiring things that I just fix on the fly because this is such a pain in the ass to... I did my wiring legit at first, but like <sighs> ever since like we wired the nitrous up at like midnight on a weekday it's they've I've just kind of been adding things on and it's like a big bundle of wires under the dash i can't take the dash out without taking the at least the front half of the cage out and i just i just don't feel like doing all that but anyways this entire harness needs to come back out so a while back i this was a gen 3 harness and i swapped it over to gen 4 which that's fine you can do that but the connectors that I used weren't really on the up and up. So I've been using that heat shrink solder stuff and it works okay-ish, but like the solder breaks down and it might just be getting too hot in here and it's melting the solder, whatever it is. But basically like I have this much wire to work with off the firewall right there. So it's kind of tough. So without taking the entire harness out and doing it the right way, because I can't get a soldering gun in there, and I don't have enough wire to slip heat shrink over it. So that's my dilemma. But nevertheless, I'm going to try to use these crimp heat shrink deals, and that I means it should work out a lot better. Um, I really want to rewire the thing. I really want to just order a Gen 4 harness, but that's $500 I don't have. And, I mean, I have to snake the whole thing out anyways, regardless. But today, I'm going to change those connections over to those and that in theory that should be fine from there on out we'll see so hopefully this will be pretty straightforward but basically it, it was all right until i swapped the intake the other day which i did not record i just did that real fast shout out to bob for hooking me up with another ls1 intake that does not leak in the back this little port back here where the map sensor and everything goes was leaking and uh something just got messed up so I'm going to fix those connections real quick and make sure everything's solid. And hopefully next week we can get this thing dialed in and add a bunch of timing and a bunch more boost and finally go fast. So uh, I'll just, it'll be segments of, look, this is what I did kind of deal, but I'll let you see the wiring and whatnot once I get all that loom and electrical tape stripped off. All right, so this is what I'm talking about here. Uh, this is all I got to work with right here. Oh, we're zoomed in come out uh cam sen no that's crank sensor this is cam sensor so what i did what i done see what happened was uh i this was a gen 3 harness i swapped it to gen 4 i actually have a video on it i kind of wish i want to redo that video because it's like my most watched video on my channel and i didn't know at the time the best way to do this and nobody else has done it that i saw um, well, I saw one forum that somebody did it with like a, a, a Dominator ECU or something like that, but it's basically the same concept. The Gen 4 sensors run off of a 5 volt reference, the Gen 3 run off of 12. So this harness had 12 volts run to it. Um, you can see the red wire, normally Holly does red for 12 volts and green for 5 volts. So the map sensor runs off of 5 volt reference, which is right here. Actually, that has a red wire on it, too. Maybe I just lied again. I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> I tapped into the map sensor wire, and I made this janky-ass splice, and I just fed 5 volts over to these two sensors. So what I'm wanting to do now is hook them back up the way they were with the power go wire going to the 12-volt wire, and I'm going to go to the harness plug under the dash, and I'm going to cut that, and then I take five volt um, power from the power tap output and run it to that wire. And I'm pretty sure that it just feeds these two sensors. So hopefully I won't fuck any of the other sensors up when I do that. But that's my plan. <laughs> I, I need to get in there with a the voltmeter. It's just, God, I, I got to flip upside down with the bucket seats and shit and stick my head. In. It's, it's going to be a pain in the ass, but you know what? I'm going to do it. Um, but nevertheless... I, I think it'll even if another sensor is running off that these sensors should be set up to run off of 5 volts For when your voltage drops below 12 volts, so the car will still run so I don't think I'll have an issue, but It's been a long time since I fooled with this, but I feel like I took the multimeter and I 
made sure that it was just those two sensors. I know for a fact I went to that plug at one point and I checked the sensors from that plug and ohmed them out with the voltmeter. And I was going to deep in it, but the plug itself, I couldn't get the plug apart to take that pin out. And I didn't want to break it, so I did this shit. But I'm just going to snippy snippy <laughs> that wire and I'm going to run it over from the power tap and feed it 5 volts. And hopefully, I'll quit dealing with this bullshit. Uh, so, on, I, I wasn't having a cam error. It was uh, the in the data log. It came back as I mean, excuse me. I was having a cam error in the data log. I wouldn't have a crank error, but this I done ripped it off already. But um, the shielded wire had uh, come apart on the crank, so all this needed to be redone regardless. So I'm gonna do some things, and I'll update you in a second. All right, so this is what I got going on right now. I put all that back together, but basically I just wired it back the way it was with instead of that janky deal i had going on pulling five volts off the map sensor i hooked all the wires back up the way they were supposed to be um switching this over though this plug the two outside pins get switched um i think it's pins a and c whichever ones they uh i think it's the reference wire and the power wire on the outside and the signal wires in the middle but that's the way it it was I ended up cutting those wires anyways it's got a different plug on it so those are soldered actually so I don't have to mess with that plug the crank sensor wire I think it still has those heat shrink solder things on it but I don't know if I can even whoop get to that thing maybe but it'd definitely be easier with the exhaust coming out the front but I'd have to jack it up I may or may not do that today we'll see but anyways, so I found the power coming off of here. Oh, well, it's not going to work without that on there. If I can get it to stay. Anyways, we'll see if we can get this to beep. So my previous video had wrong information in it. So I found a diagram, the LS1 harness, which is a Gen 3 harness. It is P1B is the connector plug. Uh, some of the other ones are called J1 or whatever it is. Well, anyways, P1B will be the plug for the LS1 harness. If I can do this with holding the camera, but let's see if we can get it to beep. Anyways, it's this wire right here. So B20 on P1B is what we want. And my thing rigged up out there. Let's see if I can rig this in place to get it. The beep when I mess with it out there. We'll be right back. Okay, can you hear that? I'm touching that there. It's beeping right there. So, that's the wire that I need. So basically, what I'm gonna do, I could depin that, or I can just cut it. And I'm gonna take a wire and I'm going to go to the power tap off the harness that I already have. Yeah, look at this mess of wires, dude. See, I just be doing things on the fly, trying to go to the track, and this is what happens. And one day I'm gonna have to go through this and it's not gonna be today. Uh, anyway, so I wired my flex fuel sensor in off of the power tap, which has a signal ground, chassis ground, five volt and 12 volt out sensor uh, power out, which, um, I left a little wire hanging out when I wired it in just for this situation so I can run a wire to there and power the sensors from under the dash instead of all that janky stuff I had going on. Unfortunately, I used those heat shrink crimps when I hooked up the <laughs> when I hooked up the flex fuel sensor. Those might be okay seeing that they're not under the hood and it doesn't have a lot of heat. And if it does mess up, I, I don't know. I'll let you know if I decide to do it or not here in a second. But I'm just going to wire it in real quick and make sure everything works the way it's supposed to. All right, change of plans. So I took the P1B plug, the 12-volt wire out of B20, which feeds the cam and the crank sensor 12 volts from an LS1 harness. I went to P1A, and I went to pin 26. If you can see there or not, but that says pin 26. Is an orange wire. I snipped it and I crimped in the 12 volt wire feed to this wire right here, the orange wire, 26 on the other plug. That feeds 
all of the five volt sensors and the harness. So I just tied it in the five volts for right there, went straight to the horse's mouth and it should be fine. Nothing's pulling on it or anything like that. So I shouldn't be worried about it. I, I cannot stand crimping things, but it seems to be working better than the alternative. In theory, this should start right now. So I'm gonna plug this back in and crank it up real fast and make sure everything's good. May or may not mess with the crank sensor wiring after that. If I do, then everything should be fine. And I, in theory, fingers crossed, shouldn't have to mess with this again. So well, let's see if it starts. Bro, I just sat here and talked and did all this for like five minutes and it wasn't recording. Anyways, I'll run through all this again. <laughs> oh man. I said a bunch of good stuff too, and it was kind of funny, but I don't know if I'll be able to regurgitate that. But let's check it out. Sinking and it cranks, and it works. So it's like the third time I've started it now. So we test, I tested it again earlier. So basically, um, like I said a minute ago, um, just swap those two pins, or well, don't swap the pins, but. You can depend that one, cut it off, whatever you want to do with it for the 12 volt out that was B20 and then swap it to, or tie it in with A26 and that'll feed five volts to your cam and crank sensor. Unless you have to extend the cam and crank wires, which you will at least have to extend the cam wire to the front, make sure you use Holly shielded wire. I picked up like 25 feet for 30 bucks on Holly's website, but it has to have that shielded, uh, like ground. It's like an open wire without any, um, uh, insulation on it. And, uh, it runs along and it shields the signal wire from dirty interference that you can pick up some, say your exciter wire from your alternator or anything else, uh, high impedance or whatever you want to call it, which I had issues with that in the past. So you make sure you do that. And then on the cam sensor swap pins, A and C, the plug might be a little bit different. I think I had to shave a tab down and, but it, and it fits the sensor. I don't think it's that big of a deal. So that part and then you don't have to do anything to the crank sensor. You can just leave all that the way it is. I had to extend that one as well because it wasn't long enough for whatever reason. That's why I have to go back and um, mess with those connections again and make sure everything's on the up and up down there, which I think it has that heat shrink stuff on it still. But I wish I knew this when I first did this. I was figuring all this out on my own and I knew way less stuff about this than I do now. Still don't know everything far from it but we're getting there so that's a lot easier way to do it and i'm hoping i can just link this video in the description of the original video i made and people can find this and it can be a lot easier because i'm sure i've probably put a little bit of disinformation out there which sorry but i'm pioneered this as far as i know i couldn't figure out anyone else has done it if they have i'm sure other people have done it but they haven't made a youtube video about it so i'm going to end it here and hopefully this helps some people and hopefully I don't have any more RPM loss, signal loss problems. And we're good to go now. So as always, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you in the next one. Later, y'all.